As a college student, you crave to learn new things, and sometimes you learn things you never thought you would. You may even find that you have an interest in something and essentially create a new hobby. Even though it was completely unrelated to school, this happened with me when I heard rumors about an old mansion out in the middle of the woods. Well, that was a stretch. It, it is in the woods, but it's not out in the middle of nowhere. What started as an urban exploration phase where old creepy abandoned buildings caught my fancy turned more into historical research. I had visited other, much creepier places, but a mansion sounded too good to be true. And at first, it was. Until I looked deeper. I asked around, and next to no one had any clue what I was on about, until finally I learned of a place called Roni's Point. I've always enjoyed taking little adventures off campus to see what interesting places I could find in the area. One such place was an old school I found in an old mine town nearby. It was arguably creepier even if the land it sat on lacked an old asylum. It had mannequins and other oddities throughout. It looked like something right out of Silent Hill. Sometimes I'd be with friends, my girlfriend, or even by myself. To add to the mystery, I couldn't find any substantial information on the place. For this next adventure, however, I had no idea I'd actually learn the unique history of an old wheeling tycoon, Henry Schmulbach. So, Roney's Point is tucked away just off Route 40 in Ohio County. Eventually a road splits off to the right with a dead end sign. Up this road a little ways sits the old Schmulbach Mansion where Mr. Schmulbach only lived for two years. He was a German immigrant who came to Wheeling as a young child. As a teenager, he worked with his uncle in retail. Later, he switched to the liquor trade, which eventually led to him becoming a leading businessman in Wheeling. After working as a merchant until 1881, he purchased the Nail City Brewery in 1882 and renamed it the Schmulbach Brewing Company. While running his company, he started to branch out and became the president of the German bank which is now known as West Banco. Further business ventures included becoming the president of the Wheeling Bridge Company, local telephone, and streetcar companies. He owned steamboats and was a stockholder in various iron and nail companies. He contributed to different projects across Wheeling, such as an amusement park named Mozart Park, atop a hill overlooking South Wheeling. For this, he had an inclined railway system built to reach the top of the hill, which opened in 1893. Later, in 1904 through 1907, he had the Schmulbach building built in Wheeling. At the time, it was the first high-rise and largest office building in the state. He originally lived in a house on Chaplin Street, which stands to this day and is located at 2311 Chaplin Street in Wheeling, West Virginia. But he eventually had a much larger home constructed. This is the mansion of Roney's Point. It was originally constructed for his sisters, but one had died in 1902, and the other had died in 1912, right before construction had finished. Eventually, Schmulbach married Eva Pauline Birchie, and they lived alone in the mansion for two years. Henry Schmulbach closed his breweries due to the prohibition and enjoyed a quieter life away from the city. Although just one year after the closure of probably his most well-known company, he died after becoming severely ill in 1915 at the age of 69. Birchie was only 48 at this time and hated staying in the mansion from the start, feeling that it was too lonely. She sold it to the county for $125,000 where they converted it into a poor farm for workers to find employment before eventually being abandoned. There is some misconception of what the mansion was used for after this but a police officer by the name of Charlie Murphy claims that it was never used as a hospital of any kind. He was an officer who was dispatched to the location several times between 1978 and 1987 to break up parties and kick people out.
The misconception of being used as a tuberculosis hospital and then later a mental hospital stems from an actual hospital located just up the road that filled these roles. The actual hospital closed in 1972 due to the structure's condition. One thing I could not confirm was whether the rumors were true or false regarding the trees that are along the road up to the mansion. It was said that between the evenly spaced trees lay the bodies of those who died in the old asylum when there was nowhere else to put the bodies. Beyond that and the typical stories of experimentation and torture of the patients, there was little info I could find on that building in particular. The hospital is totally boarded up and is inaccessible, at least in the discreet manner necessary to avoid getting the attention of the police officer who lives right next to the building. While interesting, the hospital was relatively new compared to the mansion and its grounds. Speaking of the grounds surrounding the mansion, the other structures on the land served other purposes for Ohio County. The local fire department used the various buildings for practice. At this time, it was thought that the mansion was beyond repair, at least according to the county. It's unknown what actually happened in October of 1975, but the mansion caught fire, leaving only the shell behind. Exploring the mansion is not advised. It may be standing, but only barely. Less of the building was standing the time of making this video when compared to the last time I was there only a year prior. You also never know what kind of animals or people you may find in such places. If that wasn't dangerous enough, there are open wells scattered throughout the grounds where anyone could fall, never to be found. The mansion has been sitting there decaying ever since. The area may only be a small speck on a map, but it's still rich with history, and plenty of interesting history at that. But this small place that holds so much history is only a glimpse of all the history surrounding the area, as well as the whole county let alone the entire state. Right there is the front of the old mansion. And definitely quite the sight. The old driveway is actually, well, that's not the old driveway, but the original driveway is on back. And still relatively intact. I'm not going in because it's too dangerous. There it is. Henry Schmulbach's old mansion. It's only a shell of its former self. It is definitely an exciting sight to see in person.